Hey Samuelis, this is Kirby Marie here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another episode of The Freshman. Last episode where we left off, we um, kind of accompanied Caitlyn and Arjun to visit um, Caitlyn's parents that they were going on this play they were going. Um, and it looks like parent, like, it looks like Caitlyn's parents were trying to ha get Arjun and Caitlyn together, but then you know Caitlyn was at this point uncomfortable with what was happening. And in the end, Caitlyn was talking to my character, aka myself, and she in the end just blurred out that she is gay. Yikes. And then her par her parents found out. Obviously, her mom was more acceptable about the situation, but her father wasn't. Yikes. And then things turned took a, a bit of a bad turn because now Caitlyn doesn't even want to talk to me, you know, because we were trying to, you know, help her out or comfort her in whatever we can, but she just simply wanted to be left alone, so we left her alone. And now, we don't even know if she's gonna stay mad at us, just like James is with us, like, dramatic people. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we're just gonna jump right in. Also, before, I, I did the explanation first, but guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Also, leave a like, it helps out a lot, and leave a comment on your thoughts on this video. So, yeah, let's just jump right in. Chapter 12 out of 15. The campaign trail is getting rough for Chris. Meanwhile, Vasquez struggles to find the best way to say goodbye to his daughter. So, I think the person of Vasquez is gonna die in this episode. No! Am I gonna cry? I don't know. But let's see. Okay, chapter 12, the debate. Oh my god, this is so scary. After a long week of classes and campaigning, it's finally the day of student body presidential debate. Uh, I wanna go... You know, I normally go with my same outfit. <laughs> you leave your dorm bright and early to meet Chris at the coffee shop. Thanks for agreeing to help me out last minute, Kirby. Caitlin is still pretty upset about what happened, so I'm letting her sleep in. Sleep in. No problem. Is she doing okay? I know she called her mom and talked things over, but she still seems unhappy. I took it you're not you're still not speaking? No. Mm. It's okay. She needs space now. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be so completely exposed to my parents like that. If the best way for Caitlin to deal with is for me to step out of the picture for a while, so be it. Wow, Kirby. That's very mature of you. Yeah, well, I hope things work out sooner. I miss her. Thanks for listening, Chris. No problem. I'm sure Caitlin will be ready to talk soon. Thank you. I hope you're right. Now, don't you have a debate this afternoon? You bet I'll do. You seem confident. You're not worried that Sebastian's going to pull any more dirty tricks? A little bit. But I've been thinking and decided that the best thing to do is make a point of not insulting him. I'm encouraging people to vote for me, not against him. People want a positive president. Good thinking. Now let's hear that speech. Chris grins and clears his throat. Student of Hartford, I would like to thank you once again for coming to watch this debate. Hey Chris, where were you this morning? You turn around to see Darren and Logan coming toward your table. Guys, what are you doing here? Getting coffee, man. What are you doing here? We were gonna meet at the gym this morning, remember? Oh shoot, I'm sorry guys, it's just the debates today and you gotta get ready, we know. We can make you a sure, I can't. I can't, I'm running for school president. Hey! Hey, that's not funny, I'm sure Chris will be at every single practice once football season comes around again. Yeah, yeah, we know. Okay, come on, I don't blow you up guys off that often. Do I? Logan punches Chris's arm. Nah, you're good. You you just buy us all around when you win, alright? Chris glares at his watch glances at his watch, sorry. Hey, I realize that I'm doing exactly what you're about uh, what you were complaining about. I but I got a, a mic check in ten minutes. That's alright, go ahead. We'll see you later. Chris gets up and leaves. Darren and Logan wave goodbye. Actually I got a meeting with Professor Vasquez in a few minutes. Is he finally out of the hospital? Yeah, thank goodness, but that doesn't mean I'm back to working at a breakneck speed. I should go. All right, see you, Kirby. The door to Vasquez's office is shut when you arrive, but you can hear raised voices through the door. I don't care who you are. Think of what potential revenue that this can create, not to mention the younger audience your book will reach. Don't you understand that? I understand perfectly. That's not the issue here. Wait, I should wait outside. You slump down on the bench outside of Vasquez's office and wait. 
I don't want to be like imprudent. After five more minutes of heated discussion, the door slams open and Jasmine storms in a huff. Vasquez appears in the doorway and sees you sitting, sitting outside. Kirby, were you eavesdropping? No. Not intentionally. I was waiting for our meeting and while well, you and Jasmine were being really loud. I guess you're right. Vasquez sights and motions for you to take a seat. I'm sorry you have to hear that. Jasmine doesn't care that I drove my daughter away with that book. Renewing that sale may end our relationship for good. So what do you think you're going to do? I'm not sure. On one hand, the royalties will help Gabriella immensely after I pass. But on the other hand, she hates the book so much I'm not even sure she accepts them. That is tough. You're free to go, by the way. You don't want to read what I've written for you? Just put her over there. I've been a bit distracted this week and haven't been able to write anything well maybe i'll find this inspiring i promise it's got plenty of drama james told me that you two had a fa failing out because i asked you to keep my cancer a secret yeah. we did and i feel terrible so do i it was wrong of me to keep it from him and i'm sorry that he's chosen to take it out on you he really does care about you you know that right i'll talk to him i promise thank you you're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have pressing matters to attend to. Right, I'll let you get back to work. You right before you exit the room, Vasquez's phone rings. Hello? Oh, okay, okay, I'll be there as soon as I can. He hangs up. It's Gabriella. She's in labor. Kirby, call James and let him know that I need a ride. He'll want to do whatever we need to get to get to the hospital now. You pull out your phone and dial as fast as you can. Hello, taxi. I need a ride for two from Hartfield University to hospital ASAP. Oh, one speedy cab right later, you and Vasquez arrive at the hospital. While Vasquez goes into he to be with his daughter, you take a seat in the empty waiting room. Just as you're starting to fall asleep, in walks Madison? Uh -huh. What are you doing here? Volunteering! Cab requires its sisters to do 20 hours of community service each quarter. What about you? What are you doing here? Oh my gosh! Are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> what? No! Professor Vasquez's daughter is having her baby and he needed help getting into the hospital. Oh, what made you think I was pregnant? Well, Becca said the other day that she thought you gained weight. <laughs> Rude! Yeah, I didn't see it, but when I saw you here, I thought the weight might be because of a baby. Just then, the door to the maternity ward opens and the nurse wheels out Gabriela and her new son. Vasquez is with them. Kirby, meet my new grandson. Professor Vasquez, you didn't tell me you had a daughter? Nobody responds at first. Yes, yes, well. I don't talk about my personal life with students very much. Mad Madison, it's time to get to work. I guess I gotta go. Good seeing you guys. Madison skip off, leaving everyone in an uncomfortable. Uh. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Um, a baby. What do I do? What do you mean, Gabriella? Have you tried singing to him? I don't. I can't sing. The baby cries harder. Gabriella starts to sing in a low, creaky voice. I'm not going to even bother to try. Vasquez joins in, his voice deep and calming. The baby stops crying. My niño tiene sueño. Bendito sea, bendito sea. Your mother and I used to sing that song when you were a baby. I remember. Vasquez gives the baby another smile. Hurry, dark little baby. The baby reaches out to grab Vasquez's finger. Do you want to hold him? No, that's all right. This has been nice, but I should get back to work. Kirby, call a cab. We'll wait outside. Vasquez shuffles up as quickly as he can. Uh, oh no. I'll go talk to Vasquez while you take care of the baby, okay? Okay. He walk, he walk quickly after Vasquez, following him through the halls of the hospital. He keeps his pace clip until he's outside of the hospital where he finally slows and drops on a bench by the entrance. Professor Vasquez? There you are, Kirby. How long did they say it would take for the cab to get here? I didn't call one. I came outside to talk with you. Why did you run off like that? I have cancer, Kirby. I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm guessing that you're scared to get attached? Can't imagine how hard that must be. When I first got the diagnosis, I wasn't worried about being missed. My wife died years ago, my only child hated me, and all my friends are estranged or dead. Now suddenly I have a grandson and... You love him? 
Yes, and I don't, I don't want, you don't want to be taken away from him. Precisely. Vasquez looks away from you. Oh, Professor Vasquez. Don't look at me like that, like I'm so pitiful. <laughs> all right, all right, I, I, I won't, but you really should go in and talk to your daughter. Why? What would it accomplish? I burned that bridge years ago. You should talk to her because... I don't know, I guess both of them will feel better, but who do I choose? <laughs> Damn it, I hate these choices. Because she'll feel better. Gabriela's been through a lot, and she's got a long road ahead of her. Don't you think she deserves to go to sleep at night, knowing she and her father have made peace? For once, you may be actually right. I'll talk to her, but I still wish I had something I could give her after I'm gone. Don't you? What are you talking about? We were talking about it just this morning, don't you remember? Vasquez's eyes lit up as he realized what you mean. Of course, it might not correct the years of damage done, but it, maybe it will help. Let's go talk to my daughter. You return to the waiting room where Gabriela is talking to one of the hospital nurses. You're back! Yep, and Professor Vasquez had something he wants to say. Everybody looks at Vasquez. First of all, Gabriela, I hope I know that I do regret writing Winter in July. Partly because of the rift it created between us, but mostly because of how it hurt you. If I could go back, the book would never exist. I'm very, very sorry that it does. So now I'm going to do what I should have done years, Gabriela, and give you back control of your own story. When I pass on, the rights to Winter in July will go to you. You can keep the book off of the shelves or sell the rights and live the comfortable life you and my grandson deserve. I leave the choice to you. He takes a deep breath and approaches Gabriela. You see tears forming in her eyes. She hands the baby to the nurse and without a word reaches up to embrace her father. Kirby, thank you. Without you, none of this would have been possible. It was a seriously my pleasure. You have gotten to you haven't gotten to hold the baby yet. Have you? No. Oh, thank you. Be careful, newborns are very fragile. Don't worry, I'll be I will be. Oh, baby. Who's a handsome boy you are, Mr. Uh Gabriela, what's his name? Well, I thought I was having a girl, so clearly Isabella is out of the question. Now I don't know. What about Santiago? That would be your name if you would have been a boy. Or maybe Atticus. You would love it when I read to kill a mockingbird when you were younger. I don't know. He doesn't really look like a Santiago or an, Ar or an Atticus. What do you think, Kirby? Hmm. I can name the baby. <laughs> Rika, like his grandfather. I think he's Enrique. Hmm, Enrique? I do like that. I'll keep it in mind. For now, let's just keep calling him the baby. Wow. As much as we're all enjoying your company, Kirby, didn't you say your friend had a debate today? Oh crap, I totally forgot. You pull over your phone to see if slew up text from your friends. I gotta run. But don't worry about my dad. I'll have the one of the nurses call for a cab later. Best of luck with the debate. Like, I expect a full report on how it went. Kidding. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you two. I'm so glad I got to be there for this. Now, if you'll excuse me. You quietly sneak into the auditorium and take a seat near your friends. This young man is a mediocre student and party animal. If it weren't for his athletic abilities, he never would have been allowed to attend his school. I don't think that's right, and any student with common sense shouldn't either. Students of Hartville, I hope you'll choose wisely. The audience erupts in wild applause and people chanting Sebastian's name. What? Party animal, Chris? Thank you, Mr. De La Cruz. Mr. Powell, your closing statement. Thank you. I think we can all agree that there's a lot to love about Heartfelt. In fact, on three, I want everyone to shout out their favorite thing. One, two, three. Um, the, the outstanding academics. The, ro the crowd roars with things they love about Heartfelt. Play football, computer science classes, making new friends. See, there's a lot to love here, but my favorite thing is how many different kinds of students we have here. I befriend the athletes, musicians, artists, gamers, writers, kids who spend their Saturdays playing Quidditch on rooms that don't fly. We're working on it! <laughs> and that's great, I'm glad you're here. I hope, I know people think of me as the football guy, but I don't want this school to be just a place for football guys. 
I want it to be a place for everyone. And as president, I'll do everything in my power to make it happen. Thank you. And the auditorium rumps into our applause as Professor Tia wraps up the debate. You and your friends cheer as Chris steps down from the podium. Go, Chris! Great job! Once the cheering dies down, you and your friends finally have a chance to catch up. Clearly, I'm glad you made it. What happened? It's Professor Vasquez. It, it's a long story. I'll tell you guys later. How did the rest of the debate go? Too close to call. You saw how Sebastian was tearing, tearing into Chris just now? That was basically what he did for the whole debate. I, why am I not surprised? The good news is that Chris was in great form. He stayed very positive. We'll have to keep our fingers crossed. Anyway, we're having a game night in the suit. Are you in? Yeah, let me go get Chris first. Awesome! We'll meet you there then. You make your way backstage as everyone else files out. Chris, where are you? Caitlin points from her campaign manager seat without looking up. He's over there with Sebastian. Ooh. Thanks. You go over to them. Hey Chris, amazing job with the speech. Chris and Sebastian both look up at your interruption. Chris looks upset. Uh, everyone's getting together for game night tonight and... Sounds good. I'll be there in a minute. Is something wrong? What? No, I'm fine. Oh, Chris, you lie like a politician. What would your lady friend think if she found out you had a criminal record? You better think of... You better think of dropping out about my offer. Drop out. You better think about my offer. Drop out or everyone at the school will find out about your sordid, sordid past. Criminal worker? What could Sebastian be talking about? Uh-oh. Chapter 13. A 60 themes party is the perfect way to kick the election off right. But will it be a good night? Clean or clean fun? Or will someone be playing dirty? 13. Swing vote 60s. That's cool. Criminal record? Sebastian. Oh, you didn't know? I see Chris has been keeping secrets from everyone. Chris, what is he talking about? Nothing. Uh, well, reconsider my earlier offer. Unless you want the whole school to know about your sorbid past. I'll leave you two to talk. I assume you have a lot to discuss. Sebastian saunters away, smirking to himself. Get the hell out of here. Is it true, Chris? Aye. He trails off and doesn't meet your eye. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. You lied to all of us. We were your friends. How could you not trust us? I do trust you. I just didn't want you all to think less of me. I don't know what to think, Chris. Please, Kirby. This isn't the way I wanted you to find out. Just give me a chance to explain. Fine, but you need to tell me everything. I will, I promise. Can we go somewhere a little more private to talk about this? How about we head back to the dorm? No, I need to get away from everything for a bit. Let's go for a drive. All right? Chris drives in silent for a while. You glance over at him, but he keeps his eyes on the road. You ready to talk? Chris lets out a long sigh. I guess so. I guess so. I haven't told you everything about my past, Kirby. Now would be a great time to start. I guess I thought if I never talk about this, it wouldn't it wouldn't come back to haunt me. I grew up in Maine with my mom and my little sister and my brother. Money was tight, mom was working most of the time. I see. It sounds like things were pretty tough. You must have had a lot to worry about. I tried working odd jobs to help make ends meet, but my hands were pretty full looking after my siblings. Sometimes it felt like I was missing out on my teen years. I had too many responsibilities. The point what is, I was young and frustrated and I didn't have a lot of friends. I felt like I was going to explode. There was this group of guys at my school. They cut class a lot, snuck cigarettes during lunch, got into fights. The troublemakers? Big time. Anyway, one day they invited me to come sit with them behind the bleachers during lunch. Before long, I was part of their group. So you fell in the wrong crowd. It was great at first. I finally had somewhere to belong and breaking the rules gave me a thrill I'd never felt before. But you can't go on like that without creating more problems. I was neglecting my family, falling behind the school, and getting into more trouble and more and more trouble. Chris takes a deep breath before continuing. Finally, I- Hey guys, this is Kirby here. Um, editing Kirby here, actually. Um, I accidentally pressed the button too fast and I unfortunately couldn't see what sort of criminal record Chris actually did. It was a dumb mistake for me, but we pretty much uh, learned that Chris uh, stole a car. That's the criminal record that he actually did. I'm sorry that I just went too fast with my dumb fingers like Del de Salchicha. <laughs> but please forgive me and let's go back to the point. Oh my god! 
Why did you do it? I mean, that just doesn't seem like the Chris I know. I was out of control, trying to prove myself to my new friends. I just wanted to fit in. What happened then? It was bad. I was facing expulsion and lengthy juve juvenile record. Yikes. But then, I got very, very lucky. How so? My school football coach came and talked to me. He reviewed my file so he could tell that, that I wasn't a bad kid, just a little lost. He took you under his wing? He pleaded my case to the school. I got my grades back, up, joined the football team, and after my provisionary period, he got even my record sealed. He was the only one who encouraged me to apply to Hartville and helped me get their sports scholarship. My mom helped too. After everything I put her through, I'm grateful that she was so supportive. If it hadn't been for their support, I don't know what would have happened to me. I'm ashamed of who I was back then. College was supposed to be my fresh start, but now Sebastian's could ruin that. Chris! We all make mistakes. You're going through a rough patch. What matters is that you were able to turn yourself around. I'm really glad you think so. I'm just worried that the other people won't see it that way if this gets out. I could even lose my scholarship. Yikes. Well, hopefully it won't come to that. Even though Vasquez was going to cut my scholarship lots of times, but I'm still here. Yeah, I guess you got a point. Thanks for listening, Kirby. I was afraid to tell you all this, but I'm glad I got it off my chest. Chris, you know I'm always here for you. But hey, when we get back home, you should really tell the others about this. I guess it'd best be if they heard it from me. Chris, they're your friends. They'll have your back no matter what. I hope so. You, you, enter and, you and Chris enter the dorm to find all your roommates hanging out. There you are! Where were you? You two disappear after the debate. I need to talk to you guys about something. Chris tells everyone about his past and Sebastian's threat. Dude, I just couldn't read it. Wow. This is a lot to take in. I'm really sorry I didn't tell you all soon. I just wanted to leave those days behind me. I thought you rejected me if, I, if you knew all the things I'd done. What? Never, Chris. You belong with us. Yeah, we've been friends long enough to know you're not a bad guy. You really think so? Of course, we all judge by the stupid things we did when we were younger. We all have moments we wish we could erase forever. <sighs> just, just reminding me of my god face. I say the real villain here is Sebastian. I mean, blackmail? This is just cold. We can't just let him rest with Chris like this. We gotta find a way to get back at him. Yeah. Guys, wait. I don't want you getting involved. Why not? We want to help you. Yeah, a guy like that has got to have some dark secrets of his own. Seriously, it's not up for the discussion. This is between me and Sebastian. Stay out of it. Please. But he's not playing fair. I know, but I don't want to step up to this level. There must be something we can do. Your support is enough, really. I've made enough trouble in my life before. Let me do this the right way. Chris, this isn't time. This isn't the time. This isn't the time to act noble. You can't beat a rich game. Besides, your college career is on the line. If I get caught up in a personal vendetta, I'll lose sight of what's actually important. If I win, I want it to be on my terms. So I need you all to promise me that you won't go after Sebastian. If you say so. Uh, I would have loved to wipe the smirk off that creep's face. I would, if you ever change your mind. I made my decision, but I'm really happy to know you guys have my back. Hey, speaking of the election, I almost forgot about the get out vote party tonight. What? What about the night we had planned? Sorry, Tyler. We'll have to do it another night. Stack's right. We need to be there to support Chris. And, this, and as if I missed my chance to meet the, to get dressed up for a theme event. Wait, what's the theme? The swinging 60s? Oh my god, can you picture all the slim cut suits and fabulous mall dresses? We're probably going to see a lot more last minute tie dye and baker stuff combos. A boy can dream. I think I'll just wear my dress for winter formal. And I have some old clothes that look kinda hippish. You guys are really breaking my heart. Kirby, tell me your plan to go out for this one. I guess I could dress up like a 60s icon, but I'm not sure who. How about Jackie O? I can't think of anyone more classy than her, first lady and all. Plus, she was a big patron of the arts. Guys, aren't we forgetting someone here? Uh, what about Marilyn Monroe? Oh snap, you're right, I forgot about her. Who, how did you forget Marilyn? Kirby, if you want to get classy and sexy, Marilyn's your girl. He's right. Thanks for the suggestion. I'll head to the shop and see what I can find. Turn to the dorm to show you your outfit. How's this for swinging? Looks classy to me. Shall we go back? Everyone ready? Be the way.
killing video and change. You and your friends arrive at the party. 60 music splats from the speakers and tables are set with fancy flatware. Wow, this place looks great. Totally groovy, you might even say. And I'm about to groove my way to the bar. Anyone care to join? Maybe later. I'm gonna grab a table. Zach heads to the bar and Caitlin wanders off into the fray. Bruh. I'm worried about her. Wow, well, go, Kirby. She just needs a little space to think right now. Well, does anyone else want drinks? Chris? Maybe in a bit. You doing okay? Just stress about the election, I guess. Hey, it's gonna be fine. Think of everyone cheering you at the debate. All the people want you to be president. Yeah, no matter what Sebastian says, everyone knows you're the better candidate. Guys, let's not even think about the election. Tonight, it's about relaxing and having fun. And Tyler promised me a dance, right? I did? <laughs> Abby, I think we all need to unwind a little bit. You in, Kirby? Actually, I could use a break from all the drama. Let's hit the dance floor. Uh, I really can't dance. Come on, Tyler. This isn't dancing with the stars. Just go with the flow. With everyone watching? Trust me. No one will even care. Maybe you could show me some moves. I'll do my best. I'm going to go find Zach at the bar. I'll join you in a minute. Yeah, as you, cross a, as you head across the dance floor, you suddenly find yourself face to face with James. Oh, hey. James, what are you doing here? Ah, uh, this party's for the whole school, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Sorry, my head's all over the places. I figure I come tonight to support Chris. I'm sure he appreciates it. So, um, have you heard from Vasquez at all? Yeah, he called me earlier. He'll be taking some time off to be with Gabriel and the baby. Wow, Grandpa Vasquez. Somehow I can't picture him wiggly playing a peekaboo, though. Yeah, me neither. I'm just glad that he and Gabriel were able to put their differences aside and reconnect. Definitely. I think he's happier than he's been in a long time. It's nice to know that even after a lot of pain, trust can be restored between two people. <laughs> hey, do you think it'd be weird for two acquaintances to share a dance? No, it wouldn't be weird. James gently places his hand on your back and leads you in a slow dance. James, we never really talk about what happened. I want to explain my side of things. Will you at least hear me out? I'm listening. Look, I only found out about Vasquez by accident. He wasn't planning to tell me either, but I walked in on him during a treatment session. He ordered me not to tell anyone, especially not you or Gabriela. I think he didn't want people to worry. But imagine how would he have felt if he suddenly died with no explanation. How is that better than telling us in advance? I know it's a stupid decision but not to tell you, but it was his choice to make, not mine. I'm really sorry I couldn't say anything, but it was a tough situation and I hope you understand why I did what I did. I do, Kirby, and I'm sorry I blew you up without hearing your side of things first. Thank you! It's okay. I'm glad we finally got to talk about it. Me too. I just want... I just... That trust is really important to me. A few years ago, I dated a girl. I was really in love with her. But it turned out she had been seeing someone else behind my back. I only found out because I got back from class early one day and walked in on them. That's terrible. I'm sorry. It's water under the bridge now, but it's still painful to be reminded. Well, I can understand why lying is a sensitive subject for you. I don't I didn't know this would hit home so hard. Honestly, hurting you was the last thing I wanted. I know that. I should have taken it out. I shouldn't have taken it out on you the way I did. I have to say, being here with you now brings back a lot of memories. Remember the time Vasquez made you take me to the sorority ball? It's, well, he didn't exactly have to twist my arm. I was happy to be with you. Oh, how sweet. James' hands travel slightly down your back. You know, this might sound weird, but you've been on my mind a lot. <laughs> because you've been angry at me? <laughs> well, maybe a little, but mostly because I missed you. <laughs> James. James pulls you closer and leads his head towards yours. You feel his breath on your cheek. The song you're slow dancing until ends suddenly, replaced by an upbeat jam. Oh! The song's over. 
Well, I guess I should. Yeah, of course. I'll see you around. Definitely. <laughs> you part ways with James and look around for your friends. Not far away, Chris and Sebastian appear to be having a heated conversation. Damn it, dude. Will you stop it? Uh-oh. Uh, that's my grandfather always said you can polish a bike, but that won't make it a BMW. You, you, you shut your mouth. Or you'll do what? Top of my political career by leaking the secrets of my uncrupulous past? Oh wait, that's my move, not yours. You act like you're so above it all. But I'll bet that there are some pretty nasty skeletons in your closet. Don't try to put us on the same level. I'm nothing like you. I'll take that as a compliment. Chris turns up before you can follow him. You feel a tap on your shoulder. Hey, Kirby? Becca! Ugh, can you not breathe right into my face? Your breath smells like dog food. Seriously, Becca? Gee, I did, I, you didn't even try to dress for theme, did you? Bruh. Neither do you. What the hell do you want? Chris isn't doing well, is he? It sounds like Sebastian really has him cornered. Look, if you came over here just to bug me, don't flatter yourself. You're not worth the effort. I just thought you should know. I have some dirt on Sebastian that might put Chris ahead in the election. What? Why would you help me? This doesn't make any sense. Sebastian is your boyfriend. As much as it pains me to actually agree with you on something, Sebastian is a complete tool. Wow. I can't argue with that. But why are you telling me this? I, I thought you hated me. Don't worry, that hasn't changed one bit. Bruh. Believe it or not, I think I might like him even less than I like you. <laughs> now that's certainly something. What did he do to piss you off? He treats me like a total garbage. He never takes me out. He never compliments me. He's really only interested in himself and his stupid campaign. But listen, okay? I was at Sebastian's place the other night and he left his laptop open while I was taking a shower. He'd been managing his bank account online, so I decided to take a look. Wow, gold digger much? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's focus on the real bad guy here. It turns out he's been funneling his campaign funds into his personal account. Seriously? That's huge! I can't believe he stooped so low. Huh, I never would have guessed that you were so moral. Morals to morals. I don't understand why he steals money if he's already rich. I thought only poor people were thieves. Um, okay, anyway, thanks for helping me. Ah, uh, it sounds awful when you put it that way. Can we just ruin Sebastian and never speak of this again? Fine, it's a deal. Zach, Tyler, and Abby approach you, eyeing Becca suspiciously. Uh, everything alright here, Kirby? Guys, perfect timing. We need your help. We? You tell your friends what you just learned. It's gonna happen. So, all we need is proof of his shady finances. Tyler, do you think you can hack Sebastian's computer to access his bank records? That's the legality is questionable, but my skills are not. That's the spirit. Becca, you take Tyler, Zach, and Abby to Sebastian's place. Zach and I can watch the door. While I work my tech magic. Wait, why is Becca working with us? Zach, sometimes unlikely alliances are born in pursuit of the greater good. And obviously I'm the only one who has the key to his dorm. That is also a very good point. What about you, Kirby? I'll find Sebastian and try to distract him as long as I can. After you're going your separate ways, you drank, you grab a drink and wander through the party until you find Sebastian. Sebastian! Well, 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 if it isn't Chris's little cheerleader. Listen, I need to talk to you. So, Chris can't even face me like a man. He has sent you to pick his battles for him? I'm not here to talk about Chris. Oh, really? Then what on earth could you possibly have to say to me? I think that... I have some follow-up questions from the debate. There's something important issues that you didn't cover. I thought it was fairly throughout, but ask away. I want to talk to you about campus transportation. What about it? All the snow into this winter has made it hard to get around campus. Bikes, scooters, and skateboards can get enough traction, and pedestrians run the risk of slipping and injuring themselves. Hmm, yes, well, that's what I plan to... Some, so I'm wondering, how much of the school's budget you're going to put aside for campus sled dogs? Uh. <laughs> sled dogs? <laughs> yep. As in actual canines? With paws and tails? Let me get this straight. 
<laughs> Instead of simply hiring more groundskeepers to shovel snow, you're proposing that we install hordes of dogs to shuttle students around campus? Absolutely! There are more than enough shelter dogs in need of a home, and I'm sure students would love having fluffy friends to play enough. Everyone wins! Kobe, what's going on? What do you mean? You're clearly trying to mess with me. I just can't figure out if you're simply a sore loser or if you're up to something. I just wanted to talk, honest. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. If you're going to pester me all night, I'll just go home. No, wait. What should I do? Dance. Let's see. You challenge dance. You dance vigorously, blocking Sebastian's path. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> the only way you're leaving is to off a dance off. Get the hell away from me! At that moment, Tyler and Zach, Abby, Zach burst through the door. Tyler's holding up a flash drive. The genius sunk, Sebastian. What's going on? You're not the only one who knows how to dig into other people's secrets. What's he holding? Is that a flash drive? Oh, this, it's evidence. Evidence of what? One of your favorite hobbies, you know, rhymes with gimbalsling, gimbalsling, what the f I don't believe this. You may not, but the student body sure will if they ever catch the wind of this. You cut how? Oh. Save your energy for a campaign. You're gonna need this n now that the plane. You're gonna need it now that the playing field has been leveled. I suppose you want me to keep my mouth shut about Chris in exchange for the same. Yeah. Well, look at that beauty and brains. Yeah. Damn it, stalemate. So what's it gonna be? I can see that I have no choice. Then it's a deal. Yes, but I won't forget this. Someday you're going to regret ever laying noise on me. Chris in the clear or will Sebastian get his revenge? Find out in the next chapter. Well then, that was a way to end the episode. By the way, it was so funny Kirby trying to distract Sebastian. Next chapter is chapter 14 and 15. We're, uh, we're so close to finishing the freshman book too. Holy cow. But the information you uncover about Sebastian, nobody will find out about Chris's criminal record, right? Mm, I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you really did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, I would appreciate if you do. I love you all. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye!